Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Framework Laptop 13 2023 edition with an AMD Ryzen 7040U processor. And this is the first of Framework's laptops to feature uh, AMD processor options. Previous generations were available with 11th gen or 12th generation Intel Core chips, and starting in 2023, you can choose between a 13th generation Intel processor or an AMD Ryzen 7040U processor. Um, but because of the way that Framework does things, which is a little bit different from most laptop companies, you get a notebook that looks pretty much like any other, but if you bought a previous generation model in 2021 or 2022, you can upgrade to basically this version just by replacing the insides. So a couple of things that make this model different, it has a matte display instead of a glossy display, and you can buy the display and put it into one of the older models. It has that AMD uh, processor with a newer motherboard that also supports uh, DDR5 memory. You can buy a mainboard. So if you've got a previous generation, you can basically just open up the case, take out the old parts, put in the new parts, and then either sell the old parts or repurpose them for use as something else. Uh, so that's one of the things that makes Frameworks laptops pretty exciting. And the fact that now you do have a choice between Intel and AMD processors also makes it um, a little bit more exciting than it used to be because I know a lot of people are like, I love what Framework is doing. I just wish that I could buy it with an AMD processor. And now you can. Uh, like all previous versions, it has this modular port system that allows you to actually choose uh, what's going to be connected. So I've got a display port module here, but because I've got these four little expansion card areas that each are designed to take uh, interchangeable expansion cards, I can swap these out. So if I wanted USB here and display port there, I could do that, for instance. Um, this is a little bit different from earlier framework laptops because of the new mainboard in that only the two back ones, they're not Thunderbolt ports, but they do support USB 4, uh, 40 Gbps speeds. They support uh, charging and video output. The two front models are actually slower USB 3.2 ports, and this one does not support video output. This one does. So you can put USB C ports in any of them. You can charge from any of them. But if you want to use that display port module, you can't use it over here. If you wanted an HDMI module, you couldn't use it here. And if you wanted to run a USB cable to a display, couldn't use it here. So there's just a couple of little things to sort of keep in mind that make that AMD version a little bit different. But one of the things that does not make this laptop any different from previous models is that it comes with this tool, which is pretty much the only tool you need to repair or replace parts. It's got this um, screwdriver on one end with the little star-shaped um, screw uh, for all the star-shaped screws that come with this. And I'm just going to push that in there. And if you loosen all five of the screws on the bottom, flip the laptop over, you'll find that this is held in place only by magnets. There's no glue, there's no latches. You can lift the keyboard away and see what's inside. Uh, the only thing that is holding things together is this ribbon cable for the keyboard. Once I detach that, I have access to the insides of the computer. And once inside, you can see again, the main board, uh, everything can be removed using the same screwdriver. So if I wanted to replace the speakers, I could pull those out. If I wanted to replace the battery, I could pull that out. And then of course, uh, the SSD can be user uh, replaced as can the memory, which is down here. So, um, you know, if something breaks, you can replace it. If your battery sort of starts to degrade over a couple of years, it's not like an old school laptop where you can just like click the battery out from the back, but it's fairly easy to remove this and replace it with a newer model. And one of the things in fact, that sets this version apart from earlier framework laptops is that this battery is a 61 watt hour battery. Uh, if you buy the entry level, uh, 2023 laptops, either with a Core i5 processor, an Intel Core i5, or the AMD Ryzen 5 processor, 7640U, uh, you will get a 55 watt hour battery. But if you get the more expensive models with either a, a Core i7 or a Ryzen 7 chip, you'll get that 61 watt hour battery, which should last just a little bit longer. But, you know, since everything's purchasable separately, if you buy a cheaper model and you want to upgrade the battery down the road, you can do that. Framework sells all of these things in its shop. Uh, now, one of the things that I've sort of heard over the years about Framework is like, neat idea, but are they going to be around long enough to sort of keep their promises? And, you know, that's still maybe a little bit of an open question, but this is their third generation product. And as I sort of connected that, it looks like laptop wants the power on. Um, so this is the third generation product. And so they've done a pretty good job so far of keeping those promises. So 
that is pretty exciting and gives me reason to think that maybe they'll be around in a couple of years if you bought a current model and wanted to sort of continue. Uh, let's go ahead and tilt the camera up a little bit because I hadn't meant to turn the screen on just yet, but there it goes. And you can see we're actually booting into Fedora Linux. So that was number two question I probably got from a lot of people was, okay, so it can run Windows, can it also run other operating systems? And uh, the answer is yes. In fact, everything pretty much works out of the box, including even this fingerprint scanner. And so here we are in Fedora 39 beta, should also work with Fedora 38 out of the box. It does also work with Ubuntu um, LTS Linux, but you do need to uh, manually update the kernel and framework provides instructions for how to do that. And more advanced users could probably figure out how to uh, install other software as well. A um, couple of things to keep in mind is not only is the Ryzen 7000 series relatively new, and so you'll need a, a fairly recent Linux kernel in order to do that. But if you are running Windows on this, you also might need to install the driver for the uh, AMD wireless card manually. So this version that I'm looking at right here has an AMD Ryzen 7640U processor, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and it's not a cheap laptop. It sells for uh, about 1469 if you get this pre-configured version with those specifications. The entry-level model uh, is available with a Core i5 or a Ryzen 5 processor, and that would have uh, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and sells for 1050. So there is a little bit of a markup, both because you're sort of paying for the modular, uh, upgradable, repairable design, and also because Framework is a smaller company that might just not have the economies of scale that you would get from some other PC makers. But overall, you know, what you're paying for is maybe a little bit of extra longevity, because again, if you bought an earlier version, you could upgrade by spending five, six hundred dollars to buy the new mainboard without buying a whole new computer. And if the keyboard starts to show wear and tear, you could replace the entire keyboard area and so forth. So the idea is you might spend more upfront, but over time there's the opportunity to sort of keep what you have longer. Um, the display is sort of an interesting feature here, particularly as we're looking at Linux. It's a three by two aspect ratio screen with uh, 2256 uh, by 1504 resolution. It is a 60 hertz screen. And one of the things that I don't love about installing Ubuntu on this out of the box is that it doesn't support fractional scaling. So you've got either 100%, where everything looks pretty tiny on the screen, or 200%. Uh, you can enable uh, fractional scaling. There we go. Like I said, everything looks pretty tiny here now. So that's sort of the difference between 100% and 200%. You can enable fractional scaling, but uh, I found that every time I reboot, it sort of loses that unless I log out and log back in. So there's a couple of quirks to get used to if you are going to use Linux. But audio works, uh, the fingerprint sensor works, keyboard shortcuts work. Um, and pretty much everything works the way that you would expect it to. Now when I go into display settings, I think we'll see, yeah, so now we're at 150% and we've got these increments of 125. I find the sweet spot is really around 125 to 150% scaling. Um, should show you that the camera also works. I've got this sort of tilted at a weird angle, so I look very tall as I'm looking down at it right now. But uh, what I wanted to show you here is that these are actually hardware kill switches for the camera and microphone. So if I flip these, you'll notice that the camera stops working. Uh, above the screen, you can sort of see that it's gone, uh, there's little orange things to indicate what's happening. And in fact, if I close the camera app and open it again, it says no device found. So those aren't just camera shutters, they're actual physical kill switches that uh, disconnect the hardware. So if you want a little bit of additional privacy, that's another nice feature that you get with this framework laptop. Uh, in terms of performance, I've been really pretty happy. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail here. You can go to lilliputing.com to see actual benchmark scores. But with this Ryzen 7040U uh, series processor, particularly the Ryzen 7 7840U, it uh, not only outperforms the framework laptop I tested last year with a Core i7-1260P chip in CPU, uh, multi-core, single core, and graphics, but it also uh, outperforms in a lot of tests a gaming laptop I have with a Ryzen 9 6900HS processor and Radeon 
ADM graphics. And that's because um, this has newer processor uh, CPU core architecture. It has newer graphics architecture. It's not really meant for gaming per se with integrated graphics, but you could use it for gaming if you wanted to, um, because this is actually a chip that we're seeing a lot of handheld um, PC makers use for handheld gaming systems. It's very similar to the Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor that you would get if you bought our Asus Rogue uh, or ROG Ally handheld gaming PC, for instance. Um, so yeah, uh, here we are again, just sort of looking at Fedora. Everything's working out of the box. I guess I should show you um, maybe a little video playback so you can get a look at the screen here. Screen tilts back to a 180 degree angle. And it ships with Fire OS 8, which is a fork of Google Android that includes Amazon's App Store instead of the Google Play Store. Uh, officially, this tablet does not support the Google Play Store. If you so, really want a tablet that uh, works perfectly with all of your Google... Audio works, video works, uh, multiple boot uh, setups work. Bluetooth works without any problems. I was able to pair... Uh, wireless mouse with this reasonably well, and you can pick your graphical style. And uh, just to show you, this version that I'm running actually did ship with Windows, and Windows runs uh, at least as well as Fedora does on it. I've not tested um, Ubuntu. Um, some people uh, definitely asked me about sleep, and uh, while I haven't tested extensively, I can say that this laptop does get better battery life, at least under Windows, than the version that I tested last year with a 12th gen Intel Core processor. Um, I'm seeing around eight hours of battery life for a video rundown test. Not the best I've ever seen, but not the worst by a long shot. Um, here I'm in the Grub bootloader, which everything's a little tiny, but here's Windows. Um, so around eight hours versus uh, more like five hours that I was getting with the previous generation model. Now, Framework did uh, do some software and, and uh, BIOS updates, I think, after I tested that version, and it should be a little bit better, but overall... Um, battery life definitely seems to be, whoop, there we go. Uh, battery life definitely seems to be a little bit better um, using this model. So not only are we getting more performance, but we're also getting a um, uh, more efficiency at the same time. Um, if you do need extra juice, uh, the charger is not super large, and it'll work with pretty much any uh, uh, power bank or USB-C charger. Um, let me show you this. It's just like a tangle of wires, but what we're looking at here is this small 65 watt power adapter. It's not much larger than something you would get with the phone. Um, and then there's just two things that plug into it. One that plugs into the wall, which is a little bit tangled up right here, which is why it just sort of looked like an ugly nest. And then the other is just a USB uh, Type-C cable with a 90 degree angle on one side and straight on the other. So you can sort of plug one end into your charger and the other into your laptop in any of the ports, and it's not gonna take up a ton of space because it sort of goes in there sideways like this. Um, like I said, it should also work with power banks. I've uh, used it with a 45 watt hour power, power bank that I have, and so you can get a little bit of extra runtime uh, that way as well. Uh, keyboard is backlit. Um, Touchpad is nice and large and pretty responsive. I just realized it's a little out of the frame there. And um, I've been doing all of this with the screws on the bottom loosened and it hasn't really affected performance. Uh, there is a fan on the inside. I don't hear it running very much, but if you sort of push the computer to its limits, running benchmarks or doing more uh, intensive tasks, um, you, you'll probably hear a little bit of fan noise. Uh, and the speakers are reasonably loud and clear. Um, so overall, you know, it's a pretty nice notebook. Like I said, it has that matte screen. so. We're not really seeing a lot of glare. I'm gonna turn it so it's pointing towards my window and you can see there's you know, a little bit, but it's not shiny like the glossy screens we've seen of yesteryear. And just to sort of repeat that test we were doing with the camera, can't find the hardware. And it can find the camera. So. 
uh, it is actually a physical disconnect that's recognized by both Windows and Fedora. So uh, overall, you know, I think it's a pretty great machine. It does come with a little bit of a premium price, but with that premium price, you get the versatility of being able to choose exactly what ports you want, where you're going to put them, um, and which processor you want as well. There are a couple of differences in price for some of these things, but overall you get a lot of customization. And if that 1049 price doesn't necessarily appeal to you because you don't want to buy sort of the pre-built configurations, you want to bring your own operating system, etc., uh, you can also do DIY editions for 849 and up. And what you get for that is um, you choose the main board, the processor you want, but you get to bring your own memory storage and operating system. Uh, or you can sort of piecemeal it. So you can say, well, I want the DIY edition with the Core i5 processor or the Ryzen 5 processor, and I want this much memory, this much storage, these ports, etc." So, you know, it's a pretty versatile system, like I said. Now that said, because it is the same basic chassis as all the previous generation models, there are probably going to be some limitations over the years. Um, you know, if Framework really wanted to redesign the keyboard, it would still have to have the same physical dimensions. Um, if they wanted to put a touchscreen display, maybe they could do that without necessarily altering the case. Sometimes it might add a little bit of thickness, um, but you know, I'm not sure if they can do it. But one thing that I think would be really pretty difficult to do is to say, add a 360 degree hinge, because you'll notice that the design of this laptop is such that the display actually sort of touches the back here. So it's probably, you know, maybe one day we'll see a framework laptop with a touchscreen, but I doubt we'll ever see one that flips over entirely. So they're sort of um, stuck with this form factor as long as they don't want to break backward compatibility. But we are seeing frameworks start to branch out into other areas. The company recently introduced a 16-inch model, which has six ports instead of uh, four. It does not have a built-in headphone jack. So this model, the only port that's not user customizable is this 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack. So one of those six ports on the 16-inch model will be dedicated to audio, uh, or isn't dedicated to audio. So if you want to use one of the six for audio, uh, you'll need to do that. But unlike some companies which just sort of take away the audio jack and say you need to use your USB port for it, Framework will sell you six audio jacks if you really want to use nothing but audio. Uh, and the 16-inch laptop also has a new expansion bay in the back, which can uh, enable high-speed connections to things like uh, graphics cards. And so the first graphics card is going to be an AMD RX 7700 uh, S GPU. So we'll actually get discrete graphics on top of the Radeon 7080 mobile graphics that you do get with the Ryzen 7040 processor series. Um, so the 16-inch model also has an HS series uh, CPU. So this is a 28, pro 28 watt hour processor, uh, not watt hour, 28 watt processor. Uh, it's going to be more of a 35 plus uh, watt processor in the uh, 16 inch model. So the 13.5 inch is uh, got the legacy design, but brand new internals, whether you go for the Intel core processor version or the AMD version. And uh, overall, I think it's a pretty big upgrade. So again, uh, across the board, it's doing better on uh, benchmarks like Passmark, PCMark, Geekbench, um, 3DMark, uh, PCMark. All of the all the tests that I threw at it, it is one of the fastest machines that I've tested, um, and still gets better battery life than the original. So uh, that is it. That's my general high level overview. If you want a little bit more nitpicky detail, go to lilliputing.com where you can see. Uh, lots of pictures and read my sort of written remarks and check out those benchmark scores that I mentioned. Uh, I've been using this on and off for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, if I had to buy a new laptop today, I would definitely seriously consider it. It's a little bit more money than I often spend, but I love the idea of not having to buy a whole new laptop next time you want an upgrade in performance or some small component breaks. 